Good afternoon, everyone. It's Stephen Smith coming to you from Inside Out Studio, and I am here with our artist, Allison Davis. Hi. Welcome, Allison. Anyone hi. Anyone want to say hi to today? Uh, all my friends and family. All right. Well, we're kicking off back to school month here. It's September, so we're going to do, do some artwork each week with like some classic back to school or school items. So for the first week, I picked highlighters because that was my favorite thing to shop for when I was going back to school. I like the neon fluorescent colors. And I asked Allison to share, what was your favorite thing when you're going back to school to shop for? I like to shop for the crowns and markers and colored pencils. All the art stuff? Yes. Awesome. I also like the new backpack every year. Like, yeah, those are fun. It was fun to pick out. So we are going to give a shout out to... Sherry Armstead and everyone at Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. They are a seasoned sponsor for Live Art Mini, so thank you for that and allowing us to bring the studio and the artwork to everyone out there on Facebook. We're going to be hearing a quick message from them a little bit later in our show today, but thank you. Go see them at on Sims Road in Fairfield for some original one-of-a-kind artwork, just like you can get here at Inside Out Studio. So... Allison's been creating a drawing. We're also going to kind of visit in with Liz Pfeiffer, who's also created a drawing, and our feature is highlighters. So we're trying out a couple different brands of highlighters and also trying out a few different types of paper to see which would be the best to accept those highlighters. So we are going to jump to the creativity camera here, but I do want to give a quick shout out as well. We don't just have a season sponsor in Symmetry Boutique and Gallery, but we also have a monthly sponsor here, we have a Butler Tech and then the school. So they are sponsoring September. It is back to school month, so it's very fitting. So thank you to Butler Tech for sponsoring September's back to school artwork. Shall we go to the creativity camera? There we go. All right, so Allison, everyone can see exactly what you've been working on. The camera's right in your workspace. So would you like to describe your drawing and what you came up with for today? I came up with, I like to, I like emojis. So I decided to do some different emojis and I want to do a bright, colorful background. Very cool. And since we're evaluating some highlighter art, how do you feel about using highlighters compared to other materials? I like them in a way, but I don't like them because if you draw with, with a pencil, it shows through anything you sketch out. That's the only downfall to them. Gotcha. So I'll let you continue to do your dots there. But Allison did choose to work with a very light colored pencil. That way the lines of the actual pencil or using a pen didn't show through the highlighter because they are very transparent and light. And what kind of paper are you working on? Drawing paper. Okay, so we've got drawing paper that she's working on. And then we've got an array of different types of papers that we're going to experiment with a little bit. So we've got the drawing paper right here in the middle. This is just copy paper, so your standard run-of-the-mill everyday paper. And then we also have watercolor paper, which Liz used for her design. So we're going to see if we can turn some highlighters into watercolor in just a little bit. But we're just going to spend some time watching you do your dots and do your thing. I see that you're doing some layering right now. So you did some dots in blue, and you're taking the green highlighter right over top. Yeah. And that's more transparent, so you can see the darker blue coming through. And we also have a couple different brands of highlighters that we're trialing today. Kind of got our inspiration from YouTube videos called the Highlighter Challenge, where different types of artists are doing artwork with highlighters. So let's experiment. I've got a thicker Sharpie, so this is a chisel tip. And I think you can go, go ahead and 
keep working on your artwork there while I start to do some experimenting on different types of paper with the different brands of markers. chisel tip pink as well. See any differences there, Allison? Yes, the fix lighter than the Sharpie. For sure. I'm not so sure I like it. I was going to say, that's much lighter. So the Sharpie's got, seems to have more pigment to it. Yeah. And you can definitely tell the difference here on the watercolor paper. I'm going to grab another pink here. This is also a big, but it's a bright lighter, so it's a smaller tip. So this is going to give us more details. It does not pick up as well on the watercolor paper. I do love all your characters and their faces. And I like how each one has their own individual personality for your emojis. Thank you. So we can do another quick experiment too on the watercolor paper. Let's see how well they kind of blend out. Now if we can use highlighters as watercolor. So we know that water-based markers, like the Crayolas we use, kind of blend and bleed when used with watercolors. We're just going to try to activate it with some water here. This is the Sharpie brand. So it seems like we can smooth out the lines from drawing, but it doesn't really bleed. Here's the two big brands. So you're trying to activate those, they, they bleed even less. So if we're gonna go the watercolor route, I'd definitely say that the Sharpie highlighters are the way to go. Just got some notification that David Campbell's out there watching today. So hello, David. Hope you're doing well. We will see you very soon here at the studio. And having said that, if there's anyone out there watching that wants to give us a like heart or a smiley face, and also if you want to comment and say hi, have any questions for us, Allison, or any of the artists here, feel free to do that. All right, so Allison, I'm going to let you keep working on your highlighter drawing there. And we're going to take a quick second, and we're going to stop and hear from our month sponsor from Butler Tech. And they've got a message about one of their programs here. Let me pull this up, and we're going to fade into that. So we'll, we'll be right back in about 30 seconds. Enjoy this message from Butler Tech. I wanted to be a nurse since I was 16 years old, and I love helping others out, and I have a big heart. I'm just a caregiver by nature, and I feel like that's the path I need to take in life, so. What I love about the healthcare field in Butler Tech is that there's many different options for anybody who's interested in furthering their education and working within the hospital setting or medical setting. Butler Tech has really made me feel like they're setting me up for success. All right, so thank you once again to Butler Tech for sponsoring September back to school month. So adult education classes, as well as great high school program for those looking different service trades. Healthcare is obviously very important, especially at this time. So thanks for all that you're doing and thanks for sponsoring Inside Out Studio. Allison, any other experiments you can think of for our highlighters today? 
do the layering effect. All right, very good. So let's see how well things blend. So we've got the pink to start with. And I'm going to select bright yellow. What would you like to select for yours? It could be any color. This is an experiment, so we're just trying different things. Going with purple. So I've got a Sharpie bright yellow. I'm going to take it over top of the pink. So we do get somewhat of an orange effect happening there. So that's some good layering. I'm going to try it over top of the professional drawing paper. And also, let's go wet in the wet. I'm going to go into like the wet area of the watercolor. And I'm actually going to wet that down some more too. To see how well this would blend drawing directly onto a wet surface. Pretty good. It doesn't fade away and it doesn't clog the tip, so that's always a good sign. Alright, would you like to try to blend some purple into the pink, maybe on the bottom half, see how it goes? And you can always do like a test area to the side of what straight purple looks like to see if there's any difference. What do you think? It's a little darker. Just a little bit darker when you blend it? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's got more of a, know, a layer look to it because you can see like the little peaks of pink showing through. As a lot of people don't know that, you know, paper is not exactly flat. It's very, very flat, but it's made out of fibers. So there's like little peaks to the paper. So layering is a good idea whenever you do an artwork, whether it's with markers or colored pencils because it gives a more sophisticated look to things and it gives more texture to it. So let's try it on the professional drawing paper as well as the watercolor paper to see how it looks. So definitely a lot lighter on the watercolor paper because uh -huh. it's not hitting like a lot of the surface there. But then like you can see when you layer it, it does get a lot darker and adds to that color. So where we would put this into effect is let's say if we had, can I borrow your colored pencil there? So general lesson on shading. And I'm going to preview Liz's project here too. So I'm going to say if there's a sphere, and let's say it's all one color. You would think about where the light source is coming from, and let's say it's coming from the top right. This way. So it'd be brightest right about there, and it'd have a shadow on the farther side. And then we can start using pretty much whatever color we want to add the value to create the shading. And we'll kind of let it fade out as it gets to the brightest light source. So you've got your midtone value there with the pink, and you'd have a darker value. And the deepest shadow on the farther side, we could use purple for that. So on top of colors, we're thinking about values, light to dark. Blending looks pretty good there. Not the best on the copy paper. No. Probably be better on the professional drawing paper. And even better if we use it on the watercolor paper. And this doesn't act like watercolors, of course, but we could add some water to it just to make it fade a little bit smoother. And then that's what we're going to see from Liz here in just a second. But we are going to take another quick break as we transition our camera. And we're going to hear from Sherry and Deb over at Symmetry Boutique and Gallery because they've got a special for anyone that's watching Live Art Mini. Hi, it's Sherry and I'm here with Debbie at Symmetry. We just want to take a moment to say thanks for your love and support of Symmetry Boutique and Gallery because 
we love you at Inspiration Studios as much as you love us. Come see us. Come see some of our outdoor art and mention this video for a 10% discount. Look forward to seeing you. That's right. See you soon. All right. Thank you for Sherry and Deb once again. If you go and mention that you've been watching live art menu, you get a nice discount at Art on Sims on Sims Road in Fairfield. And once again, it's handmade art made in America, just like here at Inside Out Studio. So Liz, we're looking at your bubbles right now. So would you like to describe the art that you made today? Yeah, I decided to make uh, bubbles because I thought they'd look cool in markers. Yep. I like them a lot. You did some paintings too with the bubbles and they're very rendered, three-dimensional and realistic. Yeah, my so. bubblelicious painting. That's right. And recently you've been dabbling in poured paints as well. So you got a lot of cool paintings coming out of the studio. You can check that out in in-house if you want to stop by or you could check it out online as well since we've got some nice extended hours and as well as our online store. So you can look for Liz's paintings and other artwork. So we're experimenting with some highlighters and using water as well. So we're going to see if they act like watercolors and how well they blend. I did steal your brush for our earlier demonstration. I don't know what happened to my cup. Like I stole you your stole cup of water as well. And Liz, what was your favorite thing to shop for when you're going back to school for the year? I have absolutely not a clue, to be perfectly honest. No? You didn't have a like favorite thing when you went to the store? Um, I think it was just finding a comfortable backpack to wear. To be yep. perfectly honest. Cool backpacks were always important. So let's take some water to that highlighter and see how well they blend. So it looks like they're starting to blend just a little bit, but still staying to where the marks were made on the surface. And then while you're working, if you wouldn't mind giving us your impression on working with highlighters, how it compares to working with the regular markers we use versus colored pencils, what do you think? Uh, I think it's kind of like trying to find the right colors to go with it. Because, I mean, you're looking for colors that would go with each other right um, in the right ways. That's what you're kind of looking for. Yeah, because so you're fairly limited to the types of highlighter colors you get in the pack. Yeah, you're very limited, and it's still limited compared to some of these other colors. And then one thing you can also try as you go is like some like markers directly onto the wet surface. See how well they blend. I'm not sure if the tips would clog from that. But like we said, today is an experiment. Or even trying two different types of markers. Since we said we're trying like the Vic and the Sharpie, you could try to mix them together because two different types of brands in terms of blues might have a slight difference in pigment that we can get some more shading going. Prep 
up some for you. We've got blue, purple, pink. So a good experiment is once you get a wet surface, working back into it to see how it interacts. Yep. Starts to get a little bit more pigment on there. So you get a change in tone. What do you think so far? Mm -hmm. like you've got your light source coming from the front because you've got your highlights right here. And you're getting some darks around like the bottom edge of the curve on the opposite side. up in a long brush so it's going to fall out of there. And while Liz is working, just want to remind everyone we've got our Inspo Studios Golf Classic this Friday and Liz is going to be previewing some of the auction items that artists here at the studio have created. Let's see. Is this a good time for you, Liz? Yeah. I'm going to pull up some pictures of some of those items. Yeah, the, uh, this Friday is the uh, Inspo Golf Classic. And there's going to be lots of auction items that are made here by artists in the studio. Yeah. One of which you're looking at right now is a set of mugs. You can drink whatever you like out of those, pop them in the fridge, they chill nicely. And then a nice little snack dish as well as a handmade bottle opener. Yeah, and uh, there's going to be an online list of raffle baskets. You don't have to uh, you don't have to golf to buy the raffle tickets. You can do that online. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we should have that link out in the comments as well as on our recent Facebook post. So you can check out all those raffle baskets. And thank you for all the the donations from businesses and individuals to make that happen. Uh, right now, Liz, we're looking at another auction item here. You've got uh, a large bowl, so you could fill that up with chips. You could fill it up with snacks and also a little cheese tray. So if you're looking to have a, a classy game day party or entertain, uh, we also have that handmade bottle opener with that as well. And let's switch this image over here. Liz, how would you feel if someone came to visit you during the studio and made some art with you? I wouldn't mind that at all. All right, so five auction items are, they're all the same, but you can be a celebrity for a day at the art studio and also make one of our artists feel like a celebrity for the day. So you can visit us during the day, make art side by side with one of our artists and whatever you guys create together and collaborate on, you would also get to keep. So whether that's clay, glass, a painting, you can come in and visit us for the day and also make the day of one of our artists. Liz, if you had a collaborator, what would you make with them? I'd probably make maybe glass or something like that. A glass piece. Or Very painting, cool. whichever. Awesome. So there are other auction items as well. We're just giving you a quick preview. But another auction item is you can come in and take what's well, considered a class, but it's also like a party. So you and five guests would be able to come in. And this is a sample of that ceramic mug. So we've got two different art parties, one for ceramics and one for glass, where you and your friends could come in and make some art, and it would be taught by one of our artists as well as one of our staff members. So lots of fun things happening 
at that golf outing. And just like Liz said, we've got that raffle going, so you can go check out our raffle baskets. And you don't have to go, you don't have to golf. You can check those out online and put some bids on those. All right, let's go back to your artwork there, Liz. Any closing statements on the golf outing? Yeah, please support our studio. Very good. Are you a golfer yourself? I do putt-putt. Does that count? That is that is a form of golf, so it does count. <laughs> I think putt-putt is more my speed these days. Haven't swung a club in a, a long, long time in terms of regular golf. All right, Liz, as we wrap up Live Art Mini for the week, what's your take on highlighters? Eh, I'd still do painting over highlighters if you want. No offense. Yeah. They just don't blend as well. There's a little bit of blending happening, but layering, I think, looks pretty good. So you treat it just like regular marker or even a color pencil. Do some layering with it, but like we said, your colors are a little bit limited based upon the sets that you have but I still like that very vibrant, bright color. And Allison, what's your final take on working with highlighters? I would rather just use watercolor paint. Okay. All right, well, it was a fun experiment, so thank you guys for participating, and thank you all for tuning in to Live Art Mini. So Liz, we're going to switch the camera here so everyone can see you for the day. Any parting words or anyone you want to say? Bye, hi to. Hi and bye to whoever's on Facebook. <laughs> Jason Momoa, if you're out there no, watching. God, no, God, <laughs> Liz is a big fan. So no, thank you all no, for being no, big no, fans no. of Inside Out and Live Art. We'll see you next Tuesday for our next week of Art with Back to School Materials.